Hello, and welcome back to another pen talk. So it's always nice to get a box in the mail. It actually came from FedEx, and they tell you, open this side first. So we will do that. It's always great how Nick and Josh package their shipments. You know, there's a couple pen sellers in the United States that really do an excellent job, and Birmingham has been doing this since day one, as far as my experience goes. Then we'll see the usual assortment of little goodies. And this is always great. A postcard meaning to send. And you have an invoice, a thank you note, which is excellent. And like I said, an invoice. And I did order ink, as though I need more ink, but I do. And I just find these colors to work very, very well. Everything's extremely well packed. Another thank you, which is actually inside the box. It says something new. So we're going to take these out. We're going to do a full review like I've done before with other inks I've gotten. And hopefully you'll see some that you like. You never know. So the inks come in these boxes. 260 milliliter, 130 milliliter. And the card that I thought was in the package was actually separated. And how many times do they thank you for your order? A phenomenal amount. They're very focused on customer satisfaction, you know, making certain that you enjoy your experience. Give them feedback. I'll let them know I did a review. For those uh, one or two people watching that may have not seen the bottling that Birmingham Pens uses. This is an example. Very simplistically done. So you know the size and you know the crisp formula. There's a couple versions that they use. Again, very consistent. But when we come to Dewberry, and we'll flip it over, we'll notice a little bit different instructions. So let's look at the box. These are uh, very, very clear instructions. And I think they would apply to any type of ink that has some permanent properties, staying properties. I mean, I've used a lot of Noodler's permanent inks and I've not had any problems with them. But I think uh, Birmingham is just advising you that this is a different ink and you need to be more diligent when you use it. So here's my writing done on Tomo River paper. And with the Chris formula, we're not going to expect any shimmer, no glitter. That's a separate category. And there's schmears you can see. You could recover if you smeared. And it colors appear on the light side. But then the concept of crisp inks being easy to use, fountain pen friendly, and all those other things somewhat indicates that they may not be that saturated. Let's look at the color cards. So first up is a Fox Squirrel. It's a basic brown ink. You know, on the light side as we expected from the writing samples. And the chromatography it's a very interesting chromatography. There seems to be some permanence there, which in my previous experience is basically kind of like an iron gall characteristic where there's a dark gray line that bonds with the paper. But as the water pushed the ink up, it looks like we got a little bit of purple going on there. And then a very intense yellow at the very, very top. So, mix a brown. We go to sarsaparilla, we'll see a different type of color. Hard for me to describe this color. I would say it's purplish-brown. 
we'll get the chromatography, we'll see some similarities to Fox Squirrel. We got that dark line that stays at the bottom, and then a little bit of purple, and then not quite as intense yellow. So that makes the ink a little bit darker. At least one could come to that conclusion from those samples. Now we go on to Dewberry, the permanent ink. That's certainly a Dewberry color. Definitely in the purple family. Might be a little bit of sheen there. Hard to tell. But this is the first chromatography done where I lay down the ink and I put it in water and yeah, I did a splotch after I did the chromatography, but I didn't feel like doing the chromatography again. So that's a very clean color and a fair amount of permanence. But then you let it dry overnight and you see a lot of permanence there. There's not any color movement at all. So that's very indicative of a heavily pigmented ink with probably very little if no dye in it because sometimes the dye is not permanent so it will push up but in this case it didn't so let's look at the way that Birmingham shows these inks on their website so you can get kind of an idea of the colors that you're seeing from this video and the colors that are on the website we're going to do a side by side of my color card and their swatch so I did some writing on copy paper, which we're going to use for the water test. And the color is fairly similar. As a copy paper, it dries pretty instantaneously. And I'm going to start something new. I've got the 54th mass here. It's kind of like a reference point. And you do get some bleed through, but it's minor, obviously some show through. And that's what crisp inks are also good for is using on different paper. And the mass fourth didn't come through at all, but that's not quite a wet writer as I used for the writing up here. So let's get our water tray and see what happens. So you may hear some uh, rain coming down the background. We're getting the edge of Henri, the latest hurricane on the East Coast. So far, just a fair amount of rain, almost two inches, and we got another 24 hours of rain to go. But let's see how this ink works, assuming you'd written in your notebook and it had rained on it. So we're going to go into the water, getting them all wet fairly consistently. Let's zoom out a little bit and so we can see everything. I'm impressed because the initial water didn't do anything. You don't see a lot of color movement. So we're going to just stop this and let it set for a few minutes. So after sitting for over five minutes, I'm impressed. We expected the 54th Massachusetts to be fine and the Dewberry to be fine, but Fox Squirrel lost a little color and Sarsaparilla looks pretty good. So not a quality I expected in all of these inks, but it certainly survived the test of water. So you may ask, well, how does that compare to other ones? So here's a water test I did with the Rich family. We'll take Art had some remaining copper chloride a little bit. Tesla coil and ultramarine pretty much washed out. So Looks like uh, the crisp does pretty good in water. In summation, I would say that these are three very interesting inks. The water resistance property is something I didn't expect with all three. With Dewberry, I did. Comparing these three inks with the other seven that I recently got from Birmingham inks, I definitely like their Rich series. And they do have four inks, and I have three of the four, and I've ordered an extra bottle of uh, Voltaic Arc. And in the uh, Crisp series, I really like the three that I've gotten, and I enjoy them uh, very much. And the other th three recent Crisp inks I have, I also enjoy very much. 
I hope these videos help you make a decision as to what inks you might like to use. I don't think you could go wrong with any of the Birmingham inks, and there are many of them. Here's some examples of all the inks that they sell. And they're constantly adding new colors. I think the Ridge Formulation is great. The Twinkle series is interesting. It's just that I have a lot of glitter ink from other sources. I'm fine with what I have. There's only so much glitter that you need in your life. So I hope this video finds you safe, healthy, and happy. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy your pens, enjoy your inks, enjoy putting ink on paper, vellum, cloth, whatever the media that you're using and that you feel provides you with that satisfaction of seeing that ink being put down. Journal, draw, doodle, sketch, whatever you want to do, use up your ink. We've reached the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching again. I love to thank my viewers and I appreciate my viewers. I appreciate the comments. I enjoy the interactions. I do this because I enjoy doing it. Hopefully a lot of you enjoy watching them. So we're going to say bye. As I mentioned to you before, I have a lot of content to cover. A lot of new pens. Uh, here's one example. Yes, some uh, cellophane crinkle. You may recognize it. It's a pen that I said I didn't want to have anything to do with. But I bought one. I'm going to try to do a review. It's going to be hard to hold back my emotional opinion, but I'll try my best.